And when I do this on my calculator, I'm going to get 0 0.1746 Four six zero three one seven. I'm going to keep as many decimal places as I can. And then how do you solve something like this? Well, I showed you in class today how to solve something like this. The way to solve this is by using logs. So I'm going to take the log of both sides. So log of 0 0.1746037 on this side. And I'm going to take the log of 0 0.5 to the power of t over 10 on this side. Now what logs do, logs allow us to rewrite this. I can now rewrite this as t over 10 is equal to log of 0 0.5 because you're allowed to rewrite the exponent right out in front and on this side I still have log of 0 0.1746 Continuing this, in order to get rid of this I'm going to divide both sides by the log of 0 0.5 to isolate for t so I'm going to divide both sides by log of 0 0.5 and so I will end up with t over 10 is equal to, and now I'm going to have to take out my calculator and do log of that divided by log of that. So 0 0.1746037. If I take the log of that and divide it by the log of 0 0.5, I should get somewhere around 2.517848. And then now all I have to do is cross multiply the 10 and I will get t equals 25.17848. So that's what the time is equal to. And again, it asks us how much time did it take for the sandwich to reach an internal temperature of 30 degrees Celsius? Well, it took approximately 25 minutes. Okay, so 25 minutes later, well, a little bit more than 25 minutes. Of course, you can convert this. Remember, that's not 17 seconds. Um, if it wants it in seconds as well, you'd have to take this and multiply it by 60 to figure out the seconds because time happens on a base 60 system. So it's 25 minutes later, roughly, okay, or a little more than 25 minutes later, okay. So that is question number nine, very good question there. Let's take a look at question number 11. Question number 11 on the same page, it says a population of yeast cells can double in as little as one hour. So every hour this population of yeast cells doubles. Okay. Assume an initial population is 80 cells. What is the growth rate in percent per hour of this colony of yeast cells? Okay. Actually, I'm going to skip that and I'm just going to come up with the equation of this thing. How do you come up with the equation of this thing because that's really what this is all about. So you're talking about the population of yeast cells in time, okay? And you know that at time zero, there's 80 yeast cells, and you know that this doubles every hour. So it's happening every hour. This is happening every hour, it doubles. So if I come up with the formula, it's gonna be P at T is equal to 80 is your initial, B is your common ratio, in this case it doubles. So if it's doubling, that's two, to the power of T over one, because it's every year. Okay. Now, when it asks you what's the growth rate, just remember how to figure out the growth rate. The growth rate is always subtract 1 from the common ratio. So the growth rate is 1, or what does 1 mean in percentage? The growth rate is 100%. It grows. It grows by 100% each year. Okay. Use the equation to determine the population after 6 hours. Well, that's pretty simple. All I'm doing is plugging in a 6 here. Just remember, when you're doing the plugging in of the 6, do 2 to the power of 6 first. Please don't go 800 um, times uh, 800 times 2 first and then put that to the power of 6. So it's always 2 to the power of 6 first, and then you're going to multiply that by 800, and you should end up with 51,200. Okay? So the growth rate is 100%. There's your equation. And there's question C right there, okay? Uh, and you can answer any questions after that there. I have one more question, last question here that I want to take up with you. Uh, and it's going to be question 15. Question 15 says that a town, okay, so this is question 15. A town has a population of 8,400 in the year 1990. 15 years later, its population grew to 12,500 
determine the average annual growth rate of this town's population. So I'm going to just write down time and population as a function of time. Initial time, the population is 8,400. Now that happens in the year 1990, but that's initial time. And then it says 15 years later, the population is 12,500. Okay, so this is what they give you. Now, how do you come up with the growth, growth rate? Well, the growth rate, you have to know what the growth rate is per year. So you're trying to come up with the common ratio first. So how do you come up with a function for this? Population as a function of time is equal to, well, 8,400 is the starting. The base or the common ratio, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out to the power of time. So it doesn't really tell us much, but it does give us an extra piece of information. It tells us when population is 12,500, the time is 15. So I'm going to plug that in here. This is going to be 12,500 is going to be equal to 8,400 times b to the power of 15. Continuing this, now I can actually solve for b. This doesn't, include, this doesn't uh, require logs because b is the base. So if I divide both sides by 8,400, if I divide both sides by 8,400, I'm going to get um, b to the power of 15 is equal to, and when I reduce this, this will be 125 all over 84. And how do I continue this? Well, b to the power of 15, how do I get rid of to the power of 15? Well, I can take the 15th root, that's the opposite operation of to the power of 15, the 15th root of both sides. That gets rid of this. And so b is equal to, if I do the 15th root of this thing, I get 1.0268, let's say, okay? So that is the common ratio, 1.0268. Now, what's the growth rate? Remember, we spoke about this in class. The growth rate will not be the common ratio. It's not 102%. Remember, the growth rate is you have to subtract 100% from this. You're going to have to subtract 1, so you get 0.0268 which in percentage is 2.68%. So therefore, the growth rate is 2.68% per year. That's how much it's growing by.